ஸ்ரீலஹரி கிருஷ்ணாய நமக எபிசோட் ஃபைவ் பார்ட் நைன் கர்ம யோகா பகவத்கீதா சாப்டர் டூ பிஃபோர் டீலிங் வித் கர்ம யோகா ஐ வாண்ட் யூ ஆல் டு அண்டர்ஸ்டாண்ட் இன் வாட் சென்ஸ் டஸ் பகவான் யூஸ் த ஃபாலோயிங் வேர்ட்ஸ் இன் பகவத்கீதா நம்பர் ஒன் யோகா நம்பர் டூ பிரகிருதி நம்பர் த்ரீ கர்மா த வேர்ட் யோகா ஹேஸ் த ஃபாலோயிங் மீனிங்ஸ் Yoga means the bodily exercises that involve various physical postures or asanas such as Padmasana, Vajrasana, Salabhasana, etc. as well as breathing techniques and meditation. And this has been practiced for thousands of years as a means of attaining spiritual enlightenment and liberation. Yoga also means unity, the unity with God. And the Lord uses the word yoga to mention Jnana Yoga in one place and Karma Yoga in one place. Hence, while reading Gita, whenever we come across the word yoga, we must understand in which sense our Lord is telling it. A person who practices yoga is called yogi. But Boga or Bogam means unity with material things or enjoyment of sensual pressure. Number two, Prakriti. This means nature or character of living beings. Number three, karma. This means action that is kriya and sin. And karma yoga means union resulting from an action. I already mentioned that yoga means unity, the unity with God. So there is an action that helps us to get united with God. Do you think that it is the action of ours before going deep into that action? Let us analyze Karma Yoga. What is Karma Yoga? Among the 18 Yogas of 18 chapters taught by Bhagavan in Gita, the following three Yogas are of great importance. They are Jnana Yoga, Karma Yoga and Bhakti Yoga. Jnana Yoga and Karma Yoga are incomplete without Bhakti Yoga. By practicing any one of these Yogas alone, we cannot attain the state of Mukti. That is liberation. Because Mukti. All these yogas are interconnected. The striving yogi should know the true meaning and sense of karma yoga through his basic devotion to God and then through that attain perfection in bhakti yoga and then advance in jnana yoga. But to the striving yogi, bhakti that is devotion alone helps him from the beginning of his spiritual travel and remains persistent even after attaining the supreme state of living with God eternally in Vaikuntha by His grace. What do others say about Karma Yoga? In Bhagavad Gita, Lord teaches that Karma Yoga is the path of selfless action in which an individual performs their duties without attachment to the results of those actions. He teaches that by doing so, one can purify the mind and attain spiritual liberation karma yoga is to act without being motivated by ego a karma yogi should offer the fruits of their actions to god without expecting any personal reward and that by doing so one can achieve spiritual liberation on the whole karma yoga is seen as a path to spiritual growth and enlightenment and is considered one of the main paths to liberation in Hinduism. In Gita, Bhagavan says about the qualities that hinder us from progressing in Karma Yoga. Number one, the ego, that is I. The term ego is the personal identity constructed through our experience, beliefs and feelings. It is an expression of our self. The ultimate goal of spiritual practice is to transcend our ego. dissolve the ego the ego is the source of suffering and sorrow as it creates a sense of separation between oneself and the spiritual realm by identifying too strongly with the ego we become attached to our desires and we lose touch with our soul and start identifying ourselves with our body and our five senses thereby losing the love of supreme soul that is paramatma which is said to be infinite and unchanging some spiritual practices such as meditation and yoga are designed to help individuals become aware of their ego and to cultivate a non-separable relationship with god 
Once, a great poet named Otakutar went to meet a great woman poet named Avai at her house and knocked the door and called her. When she asked who was knocking on the door, this man replied, I am Otakutar. Avai replied, When I die, you can come and meet me. Now this man was confused with the answer and asked himself, How can I meet and talk to her after she dies? Then he went away. Actually, what Avai meant was, this man Vatakutar was full of I, that is, he was full of ego and pride. That is why Avai said to him to come and meet her after his I, that is, ego, dies in him. If a man full of ego cannot meet a woman like Avai, how could a man have fellowship with God without ego dying in him? On the whole, ego is the central obstacle to spiritual growth and a source of suffering that can be overcome through dedicated practice and by the help of God. Number two, attachment. Attachment also means fondness, liking, feeling, love, relationship, regard, bond, friendship, attraction, affection, possessiveness, etc. Your right is to work only, but never to the fruit thereof. Says Gita, chapter 2, 47. You work, but to eat of its fruits, you have no right over it. You will do the work, but what should not be your desire? You should not have desire on the fruit of it. Now, many of us go to various jobs and after 30 days of hard work, we expect salary. The salary is the fruit of that action, that is job. The Lord tells us not to expect fruit. Then, is it wrong to expect the salary? The point is, when we engage in Karma Yoga, we should live surrendering everything as Krishna Arpanam. This body which we live in is given by God. God gives us 24 hour air to breathe so that we may live. Our heart is constantly working. If God stops both of these, it is death for us. Therefore, whether we go to work or do some business, we should pray to God saying, Lord, the life I live is your arms. Now this work or business that I do to feed myself and my family, I consider them as service to you and dedicate that work to you. When we do our duty in this state of mind, we will do this with sincerity and dedication because we are doing the duty, dedicating everything to God and automatically the result will reach us. Can you understand? Just imagine, if the owner and the workers and the ministers and the public and the husband and wife and their children live like this, will not the earth be like paradise? But do you know that there is a more higher state than this? When a group of people allow God to plan their lives and fulfill all His will in this world without any force but by their own free will, that means God is ruling. By doing this, we are liberated. So. Let us get rid of ego and attachment which hinder us from successfully practicing Karma Yoga and let us receive the blessings of God. More about Karma Yoga in the next episode. All glory and honor to our Lord Sri Lahari Krishna alone. In God's love, Babaram Sri Lahari Om Dat Sat.